In this video, we're going to focus on a few side chain reactions of benzene that you might need to know. So let's start with benzene and let's react it with Br2 and iron 3 bromide. FeBr3 is the catalyst in this reaction. And so this is the bromination of benzene. We're going to replace a hydrogen atom with a bromine atom. So right now what we have is bromobenzene. Now starting from bromobenzene, we're going to react with an organocuprate. So in this case, CH3-2-CuLi. So dimethylcopper lithium. And what's going to happen is a methyl group is going to displace the bromine atom giving us toluene as our product. And then in the next step, we're going to use NBS, which is equivalent to using Br2 with UV light. And what's going to happen is one of the benzylic hydrogens is going to be replaced with a bromine atom. And so what we now have is benzyl bromide. Now, starting from benzyl bromide, there's some stuff that we can do with this. We can react it with a nucleophile in an SN2 reaction. Since we have a primary alkyl halide, this will favor an SN2 reaction. And so the hydroxide ion can attack the carbon, expelling the leaving group. And this will give us benzyl alcohol. And then if we want to, we can oxidize the primary alcohol into an aldehyde using PCC. And so now we have benzaldehyde. Now you can also produce benzaldehyde using the gadamin koch reaction. So here it is. Let's say if you have benzene, You can react it with carbon monoxide, hydrochloric acid, aluminum chloride, and copper one chloride. And this will also give you benzaldehyde. So that's another way in which you can make uh, this compound. Now something else that we can do once we have benzyl bromide is that we can react it with ammonia. And notice what's going to happen if we react it with ammonia. So this is going to be another SN2 reaction. And this is going to give us a protonated amine. So now we have a nitrogen atom with three hydrogen atoms attached to it. So our next step is to deprotonate the amine. So we could use excess ammonia to get rid of this hydrogen, or at this point, we could add hydroxide to the solution and hydroxide will take off the hydrogen. And so this will give us benzyl amine as our product. Something else that we could do is we could start with benzyl bromide and we could react it with another nucleophile. In this case, we're going to use cyanide, which looks like this. So cyanide can attack the carbon, kick out the bromine atom, and now we have a nitrile group on a carbon that's next to the benzene ring. Now, once we have this nitrile group, we could reduce it with hydrogen gas, and so we could turn this into a primary amine. But this time, we're going to have an additional carbon. So we have an amine that's between, there's two carbons between the NH2 and the benzene ring. In the last example, there was only a one carbon in between them. In addition to that, what we could do is 
react this with HGO+, turning the nitrile group into a carboxylic acid. So as you can see, there's a lot that we could do here. Now there's some other things we could do as well. But first, let's add two carbon atoms to a benzene ring. And so let's use the Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction to add an ethyl group. So here we have ethyl benzene. And then let's add a bromine atom to the benzylic carbon by using NBS. So now the bromine atom is on a secondary carbon as opposed to a primary carbon in the last example. Now what we're going to do is use a strong base. Let's use terputoxide. And this is going to favor an E2 reaction. So the sterically hindered base is going to go for the most accessible hydrogen, which it has no choice but to go for the primary hydrogen. It's going to form a double bond, kicking out the bromine atom. Now notice that this double bond is conjugated with the benzene ring. And so that makes it quite stable. And this molecule is called styrene. So that's how we can make it starting from benzene. Now what about making benzoic acid? How can we do that? So one way is that we can react the benzene ring with methyl chloride using an aluminum chloride catalyst. And so this is the Friedel Crafts alkylation reaction. And this is a simple way to make toluene. And then once we have that, we can use a strong oxidizing agent like potassium permanganate under acidified conditions with heat. And that will oxidize the methyl group into a carboxylic acid. And so that's a simple way in which we can make benzoic acid. Now let's say if we have many alkyl groups attached to the benzene ring. Let's say we have a tert-butyl group, an ethyl group, a methyl group, and an isopropyl group. Now what's going to happen if we oxidize this compound using a strong oxidizing agent like chromic acid with heat. What you need to know is that the methyl group is going to be oxidized to a carboxylic acid. The ethyl group will also be oxidized and also the isopropyl group will be oxidized to carboxylic acid. However, the tert butyl group will not be oxidized to a carboxylic acid. And the reason for that is the benzylic carbon is a quaternary carbon, and therefore it has no benzylic hydrogen atoms. Here we have at least one benzylic hydrogen atom, and here there's two of them, and here there's three. So therefore, those groups can be oxidized to a carboxylic acid, but the terbutyl group is resistant to oxidation. So this is going to be the product if we use a strong oxidizing agent like chromic acid, or potassium permanganate with H2O+. Now there's some other things that we could do as well. So once we have a benzene ring, we can react it with nitric acid and sulfuric acid. And this will give us an NO2 group on a ring. And so what we have is nitrobenzene. Now starting from nitrobenzene, we can reduce it using a metal such as iron metal and hydrochloric acid. You could also use zinc metal. I've seen also tin metal used in this case. And what's going to happen is the NO2 group will be reduced to an NH2 group. And so now we have aniline as our product. And then if you want to, you can react aniline with an acid chloride. And so what can happen is the NH2 group can react with the acid chloride, giving us an amide 
functional group, which looks like this. So that's how we can make an amide using aniline.